Today I wanted to talk about a cross-campus project that we've been working on uh, for the last four years. And basically the, the question we've been trying to get at is how do we survey coral reefs fast enough to manage them in light of climate change? And this project um, we call the Computer Vision Coral Ecology Project. And the real impetus for this project is that coral reefs globally are in real trouble. 80% of coral coverage in the Caribbean has been lost in the last 30 years, along with up to 50% in the Indo-Pacific, and even 50% of the Great Barrier Reef, um, which is one of the best protected coral reef ecosystems in the world. And there are a lot of societal and socioeconomic benefits of healthy coral reefs. It's been estimated there are 500 million people globally dependent on healthy coral reef ecosystems. 25% of the species um, in, in the ocean are found on coral reefs, and the area provides billions of dollars every year, um, both from fishing and from tourism. So there's a real um, economic component of having healthy coral reefs. But with this rapid rate of decline, the question is, is how can we get data quickly enough so that we can actually provide data that can be useful for, for management and conservation of these very important ecosystems. So the project we worked on um, was trying to develop semi-automated computer learning technology to improve the speed and scale of coral reef surveying by 100 to 1,000 times. And with traditional coral reef surveys that have been um, going on for the last 20 to 30 years, traditionally um, divers would go into the water with a clipboard and basically count the, the coverage of the main um, ecologically important organisms on the reef. So there was a lot of time that was spent in the field and then a small component of the time that would have to be spent in the lab to analyze that data. With the advent of cheaper digital um, photography and digital storage in the last 10 years, the, the field has moved to doing photographic surveys where in a short period of time in the field you can collect hundreds to thousands of images, but the issue is that to get data from that imagery can still take a lot of time back in the lab. There's been some manual analysis tools or software programs that have been developed in the past um, to manually annotate and to determine, um, let's say, how much coral of type A there is versus type B versus sand algae, but each image you typically have to analyze 100 random points or more. And then when you get into thousands of images, all of a sudden you have this really tedious task. Usually we have undergrads slaving away at trying to do this analysis, but it, it's really the bottleneck to getting the data that we need for, for science management and conservation. And with the advent of new imaging technologies, such as automated underwater vehicles, remotely operated vehicles, and imaging sleds, the rate of image acquisition has increased by 10 to 100 times. So now we're getting hundreds to thousands to hundreds of thousands of images from each survey, but this analysis bottleneck remains. So the point of this project was basically to use a semi-automated um, analysis system, basically to use the manual annotations that have already been done to train the computers to be able to make automatic um, annotations of, of the imagery to, to be able to, to speed up the, both the pace and the scale that we can do these surveys. And the way that this happened was through a cross-campus collaboration that was really started with a CMBC IGERT program um, that put us in touch with an IGER program on upper campus um, with the UCSD computer um, vision um, program that's led by professors David Kriegman and Serge Belangi. It involved our group at Scripps, which is the Scripps photobiology group um, led by Greg Mitchell. Um, and then also involved engineers in the Jules Jaffe Laboratory for Underwater Imaging to develop custom um, camera systems that it can prove the accuracy and, and the rate that we do these studies. So it was really a, a collaboration between computer scientists, biologists, and engineers to try to s solve a pretty targeted problem. And um, after we initially hatched this idea, it took a couple years to get funding, but eventually we got an NSF um, that really supported the, the project. And from 2000 to 2012, um, we worked on a cyber infrastructure grant from the NSF 
and we were able to develop CoralNet. Um, oh, sorry. We were able to develop CoralNet, which is this online um, resource, which is web-based, um, open access, open source interface, where users globally can upload their images. After doing a set number of manual annotations, the computer can then take over. So whereas in a month they might do um, 100 to 1,000 manual annotations, the computer in the, in the next couple of weeks can then work through the thousands to hundreds of thousands of images. And currently, um, this web portal has 30 image projects globally um, with collaborators that we're working with around the world. There's over 30,000 images that, that are uploaded on the site. So there's one million of these manual annotations that were done in this painstaking fashion. And we use these manual annotations as a training data so that the computer can generate the automatic annotations. And we are already had about 1.4 million um, machine annotations. This slide got a little messed up, but basically we did an a, a interoperator study where we got coral reef scientists, eight coral reef scientists from around the world to work on image data sets from four uh, Pacific Reef regions, Morea, the Great Barrier Reef, um, Taiwan, um, and the Line Islands. And when we compared the results of the computer analysis to that of the local experts and the non-local experts, which are shown in gray, we, we were able to show that the computer could get 80 to 90% accuracy. So this is really a tool that has a lot of potential. And we've already started some international collaborations. We've been collaborating with the Catlin Seaview Survey, which is funded by Google and Catlin Insurance. And their goal is to do a global survey of all the world's coral reefs. And our semi-automated technologies are really the um, image analysis pipeline for all these images. So they've already collected 300,000 images from Australia, another 400,000 from the Caribbean, and we're going to hopefully get data on reef health globally um, within the next months to years rather than years to decades. So I just wanted to highlight kind of a project that was cross campus that, that was really um, getting some different approaches was really critical for finding a solution to, to a, a major problem. Thanks. Okay, thank you, David. <clears throat> Do we have questions specifically for David? This is a great example of taking a pressing problem and translating it directly into a very clear plan of action. I can imagine that the infrastructure that you've put together here will apply not only to coral reefs, which clearly is the first passion here, but to many other types of situations. Have you all thought of a short list of what those might be? Yeah, so the, the next steps is we want to go from coral net to benthos net. So the next step would be to work on other uh, marine ecosystems. And we were planning on trying to collaborate with NOAA to um, try to work with them to automate a lot of their um, imagery and surveying data. Um, kelp forests, since we have such great kelp forests right off our coast, this will be an area that we're very interested in working on, as well as rocky reefs, um, potentially mangroves and seagrasses. Um, all have a lot of potential. So um, again, working with a large um, interdisciplinary team can be challenging, and getting the funding to do these projects can be challenging. But being at UCSD and Scripps, I feel like there's a lot of opportunities to get people who approach the problem in very different ways but can come up with some unique solutions. Great. There's a question back here. Thanks, Jules Jaffe. So I just want to make the point that even though your curve shows you're spending more time uh, analyzing data and less time collecting it, our colleagues find you know ship time is so expensive they can only go out and, and map maybe 10% of the reef. So the next step that people like I am looking forward to is creating swarms of miniature vehicles to actually do this mapping. And I think here at SIO and UCSD, we are ideally uh, positioned to do such things. So just a little plug for my for future interests, but thank you. Great, thank you.